Welcome back. You are now in our video number two for our NTHS one pager project. In our last project, we set up our document with our four guides that are vertical and our three guides that are horizontal. We also made sure that in our layers panel, we had um, text and graphics and images on two different layers, and we named our document and saved it in the correct folder. In this video, we're going to set up the layout of the text boxes in our page here and we're going to go ahead and put our frames in for our images. So first thing we want to do is make sure that we're on our text layer because we're going to start with our text layer. I'm going to go ahead and lock my graphics and images layer. This is a good practice to make sure that you don't accidentally throw something in that layer that you don't want. So I'm on my text layer. I know that because it's blue, it's highlighted, and then I have locked my other layer. I'm just going to get that out of the way for right now. All right, the first text box that I'm gonna create, I'm gonna use this type tool right here. So that's the fifth tool, one, two, I'm sorry, that's the sixth tool down on your toolbox, the type tool. And I'm going to use the blue horizontal guide and go all the way down to the orange horizontal guide. And I'm gonna use this margin and the red vertical guide as my vertical limits. So I'm gonna click and drag from here to there. And now I have my first text box. With that first text box, I'm gonna go ahead and go to type, and then I can go down to fill with placeholder text. And that's gonna fill in my placeholder text into that box so that I can see how it is formatted. In my next box, I'm actually going to create it the entire area between the red vertical guide and the right margin. And then it's gonna go horizontally from the blue horizontal guide to the orange horizontal guide. So again, with my type tool, I'm gonna to click and drag. And if you see, I still have this text box selected. You can see my cursor still in there. So actually, I'm gonna just use the selection tool and click somewhere else and then get my type tool again. That way, I'm not accidentally doing something to this box that I didn't wanna do. And when I go up here, you can see that I have a cursor. That just is telling me that I'm really close to this text box. And so InDesign is trying to make me actually write inside of this text box. So instead of starting my box right there, I'm actually gonna start on this side just so that there's no interference with that text box. So I'm gonna go from this corner all the way down to this corner. And now I have my text box. Again, you can't really see it until we put that placeholder text in. Now, last time I went up to type, but this time I'm just gonna right click, fill with placeholder text. Those are my first two text boxes. I'm going to use my black arrow here and select both of them. It's a black arrow tool, select the first one, hold down the shift key and select the second one. With both of them selected, I'm gonna go ahead and create an inset of 0.125. And what that means is that um, even though my box, my text box goes up to this line, it's going to create a little bit of a, like a buffer, a little area on the inside that kind of moves it down on, on all sides. So it kind of brings it all in a little bit, it's an inset. The way that I do that is I go up to Object, Text Frame Options, and then I'll have my inset spacing here. They are all linked, so all I'm gonna do is press this up button once and twice to get to 0.125, and then click OK. And you can see now that it has this little inset on both of my two text boxes. My next text box, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this text box that I already created and I'm gonna copy it so that I don't have to do that inset again. I'm gonna hold down the Option key if you're on a Mac, Alt key if you're on a PC, and click and drag this box up. And it doesn't really matter where it goes right now because we're gonna move it around. So I'm going to take this top box and move it to the top margin and the handle at the bottom of this text box and move it up to that blue horizontal guide. So we have a text box right there. And then again, I'm gonna copy the same text box. Once again, I'm only copying it just so I don't have to do the inset again, it just makes the life a little bit easier for us. So I'm gonna hold down that option key and I'm going to click and drag down here. And this time I'm going to move my text box in between the violet vertical guide and the green grass vertical guide. I want the top of it to hit the orange guide and the bottom to hit that bottom margin. So we have one, two, three, four different text boxes all with an inset of 0.125 and they all have placeholder text in them. 
I do want to point out that there is this little plus sign, this little red plus sign at the bottom right hand corner of all four of our text boxes. You'll notice that you'll also see this little red dot here at the bottom that says four errors. Basically what that's telling you is that you do not want to finish this project and print it right now because all of four of our text boxes have overset text. That red box with the plus sign and those red, that red dot with four errors at the bottom is all trying to tell us that there is text that is outside of the text box that we can't see. Because we're using placeholder text, it's not our real content that we want to use in our document. It's not a big deal for right now, but just keep that in mind as you're working through. You just want to make sure that if you ever do see that, you're paying attention to what text is hidden from view. Okay, so another thing that we need to do to this big text box here is we need to right click on it and go to the text frame options again, because this one's actually going to have two columns. So I just went in there and text frame options and change it to two columns. I'm going to click preview box so you guys can see what it does. It changes that so that it's now into two columns here. And then we're going to click OK. The bottom text box, we're going to make sure that this has, we're going to go to right click and text frame options and we're going to make sure that it is center vertical justified. So that means that the text top to bottom will be centered within that box. And then we're going to take this text box and actually duplicate it a couple times. So I'm going to click and drag it and move it over to our left hand margin and the bottom margin. And then I'm going to hold down the option key or alt key if you're on a PC and click and drag all the way to the other margin. Now listen to what I'm doing because this is kind of tricky. I'm, I'm still holding down my mouse click. I'm still holding it down, but I'm letting go of the option key. So I'm still holding down the mouse. While I'm still holding down the mouse, I'm going to click the right arrow on my keyboard once, twice. And you'll see these little dotted lines pop up. That's where the extra text boxes are going to come in. And you can see that it has now evenly spaced these four text boxes from left to right. All right, so we got our text where we want it. So now we're going to go and go ahead and lock our text layer. I'm going to move up here to the graphics layer and unlock that layer because we're going to add in some frames for our graphics. Our first frame, so I'm going to go over here to my frame tool, rectangle frame tool, and I'm going to draw my first image box from the top and left margin intersection all the way to the violet and blue intersection of the margins. So something like that. My next text frame, I'm actually going to click off of it and get a new one is going to be from this orange horizontal guide and the right margin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag up from that, that intersection, holding down the shift key so that it's a perfect square. And when I get to the gray guide, the light gray guide, I'm going to let go. So it should look like that. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is the circle frame that the image is going to be in right here. So I have to change my frame to the ellipse frame tool. And I'm going to start up at this, um, the blue horizontal guide and the right margin. And I'm going to click and drag down while holding the shift key to make sure that it's a perfect circle and go all the way till it hits that green guide right there. So when it hits the, the green grass guide on the other side, now I have that frame where I want it. I'm going to go back over to my rectangle frame tool and from the black horizontal guide and the red vertical guide, I'm going to click at that intersection and go down to the green, the green grass and the orange guide intersection. So something like that. So those are where our main four images are going to go. I'm going to go ahead and get my black arrow here and select all of these at once. So you could select one individually, hold down shift and click on each one of them. Or over here in the layers panel, you can just click on that red square next to the graphics and images and it will select everything inside of there. And while all of those frames are selected, we're going to go ahead and make turn on text wrap, which makes the text go around these images so that they are no longer being like the text is not going through the frame. So in the text wrap, we're going to go ahead and click on this first one, which says wrap around bounding box. And you can see it already has corrected some of the issue that we were just talking about. The offset is how much of a space you're, it's going to give you around the outside of the wrap of the frame. Right now I want all of them at zero, except for the circle, which I just clicked off in here, the gray area to deselect so that nothing's selected. I'm going to click on that circle and we're going to change that one to 
one, two, five, all the way around. So I just clicked up twice and it, the top, bottom, left, and right now are all linked together at 1.125. And you can see it gives you a little red line here that shows you that offset around the text wrap. We do want to unlink this though, because we need to change our left offset, which is this one right here, just a little bit higher. We're going to go to 0.187. All right, so it should look something like this. All right, you've done it. You've laid out your text box frames, you laid out your image frames, and so you've got your layout ready to go. For our next step, let's go ahead and save. So you can do Command S or Control S, or you can do File Save. Thanks for watching. This completes video two. Click here to move on to the video three, and we'll see you in the next video.